okay 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 everybody y'all know what it look like what it look like we in the core so if we in the core what does that mean that means that y'all riding with me and let's talk um this will be a quick little vlog just to give y'all a little inside of my life um, I'm on my way to job number two, so y'all gonna ride with me. Excuse me if this new phone mount makes it shake, but I'm trying to do the best that I can with the time that I have. Um, today we're gonna talk about chronic pain, fibromyalgia, and rheumatoid arthritis. I suffer from both. Um, it's hereditary in my case. Uh, I got it from my mom who has severe arthritis throughout her entire body and fibromyalgia. Um, okay, you guys, I'm back. Like I said, it's chronic pain throughout my your entire body and in my case, it's hereditary. Um, sometimes fibromyalgia can come on due to stress. So stress can, severe stress or um, a shock to the body like a car accident or something severe like that could cause your body to then, then um, trigger fibromyalgia. Also, um, it's some type of infection, things like that can also trigger your body to to um i'm sorry y'all been thinking all day my brain is fried to have a uh, fibromyalgia so fibromyalgia is a nerve disorder um disease what it it triggers all the nerves in your body so everything hurts everything when i say everything i mean your wrist your ankles your legs your hips, I have, my hip is really bad and has been for the last two months now. Your hips, I'm stiff. It causes stiffness like for the first probably four or five hours of the day, I am so stiff. Like my neck, like right now, I think I'm starting to have a flare. And a flare is when your body is starting to go into a fibro, your fibromyalgia is being triggered. Um... So I'm really, my neck is really sore. My shoulder is really sore. I'm stiff right now. Um, yeah, it's just like chronic fatigue, chronic pain. Everything hurts to the touch, actually. Like, I can't actually have, I can't go for a massage. When I go for a pedicure, they know now that, don't even worry about massaging my legs because I can't take that, that's, agony basically um is fibromyalgia can could consist of so many symptoms you could be walking around with fibro fibromyalgia and not have a clue um fatigue pain throughout your entire body stiffness Fibro fog. Fibro fog is where your mind, like you see how I forget words a lot, that's triggered from my fibromyalgia. Fibro fog. Fibro fog is triggered from the uh, insomnia. That's a symptom. Lack of sleep. I think last month, I probably, for at least two and a half weeks out the month, I slept approximately three hours a night. And I would wake up every morning at 3 a.m. and just stare at the ceiling. Just sit there because I figure if my sleep come back, I might be able to go back to sleep. But it never, never happens. Um, sensitivity to light. My, you, you have migraines. Everything that could hurt, you have it in, my, in fibromyalgia. Um muscle tenderness is uh like it's called allodonia Allo i believe that's the correct pronunciation allodonia is like when to the touch if somebody touch me poke me yeah that hurts um i don't like to play them games that hurt it hurts a lot and i feel bad for 
sometimes I just suck it up. I feel bad for my kids. Like, they want to hug mama. You know, especially my baby, my 11-year-old. You know, she wants some affection and hug on me. So, But she knows that it hurts me. So she is kind of apprehensive of, of hugging me and all of that. So I just take the pain, of course. I feel bad for my husband sometimes. You know, he just might want to rub on me or rub on my neck. But he is conscious of that I'm always hurting. Um, another symptom that comes along with fibromyalgia is depression and anxiety. Um, the depression you, it is caused by all of the pain. When you have a fibro flare, you're exhausted from all of the pain. So you tend to, once you get a flare, you tend to stay in the bed for, I've stayed in the bed for a week. Um, because of the pain meaning that I couldn't go to work I couldn't get up I could barely walk to the I've I've, I've had instances where my um, daughters would have to help me in the bathtub because the hot water and Epsom salt would you know kind of relieve me for a little bit but it's a difficult disorder and it's it's even more difficult to deal with because look at me right now you wouldn't know something was wrong with me, would you? You wouldn't know that I suffer from from some some sort of chronic pain. And that's because it's like a hidden type of uh, disease. It's like, I'm good right now, but tomorrow I could be down for the count. And people forget that. They think you know, they forget that it's actually something wrong with you. And, and, and some people even think that you're making it up. Um, hypochondriac. They they think that you're a hypochondriac. It is physicians out there that that truly believe that this is not a true disease, and it is. I'm living, I, living, breathing it, and I'm telling you right now, I'm hurting right now. But what can I do? I I gotta keep on moving while I can, you know while I can because when I go down I go down what triggers what could actually trigger a flare is um the weather the weather if it's cold if it's rainy oh during the winter season fall season I'm down a lot I miss a lot of work because of um the flare-ups they they are very often during that season um food food could flare you up different types of food uh sugars and you can i can't actually pinpoint what triggers it but different foods can trigger a fibro flare also um like i said headaches depression anxiety and then on top of all of that of course treatment treatment is you could go for massages, but guess what? That hurt like hell. The massages hurt, so I don't want to do that. Um, exercising, yeah, I need to get back into exercising because it, it hurts like hell, but it relieves the stiffness, and maybe two or three days later, it kind of makes me feel, I feel a little better, a little better three days later. Now with the exercise, the catch 22 to that is, you, you know how the day after you always feel um, your, your muscles are sore from the exercise? Well, that's magnified times 20 when you have fibromyalgia. So it's like a give and take. Do I want to be hurting really bad tomorrow? Is me working out for 30 minutes worth me hurting tomorrow? Yes, it is, but no, it's not because it's, it's terrible. It is. And I, and I try to push through as much as I poss possibly can. Those who, clo who are close to me are aware of uh, the fibromyalgia. And my husband is always asking me, you know, how you feel? Are you okay? And who wants to be that needy person that always says, I'm sick? I don't feel well. Even though that I'm sick and I don't feel well, I can't do the things that I used to do. And that is depressing in itself. But I try to do what I can and, and, and push through. You know, I don't want to complain about it all the time. I don't want to be 
singled out as that sick person. I don't want to be that friend that somebody hesitates to call because, oh, you want to go to, no, she's not going to want to go out with us because she hurting or she don't feel good or they think I'm a comp, uh, um, hypochondriac. It's just really, it's really a difficult thing to live with. And if you know anybody that's suffering for chronic fatigue, I need y'all to have some sort of compassion for them. You know, when you're around somebody that is always something, we become immune to that something because we know that they're going to, that they they always are that way you can't be that way chronic chronic pain is not something that you can brush off to the side they, it, it, and it's much more than just chronic pain it's it's the depression that comes along with that chronic pain from being stuck in a bed not being able to do the things that you want to do um there's been situations where i made plans for the whole week to like kick it and the next morning i have a flare and i can't get out the bed for three days cannot get out the bed for about three days that sucks and you got to think that's idle time i'm not used to sitting still well i am but i'm not um that's idle time the mind can do some crazy things to you when you stuck alone in the bed physically not being able to do for yourself so we got to have compassion for people like that uh, let's see what else did i want to talk about with the fibromyalgia um like i said there is tender points it hurts to the touch medications medications are very difficult for me because I can't take them throughout the day because I work a lot. Um, when I make it home, it's either 10, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. You got to think that these medications, some of the medications that I take, that I take are for um, patients that suffer from seizures because that treats nerve, nerve, uh, nerve, pain, nerve disorders. So that's strong. I mean, that can knock me out for a whole day, but I have to take it sometimes. So I'm taking that at 11 o'clock at night, trying to get up at um, 5.30 in the morning and, and have a, a, a complete day. That's, that's a struggle, you guys. It really is. So most of the time, I go without my meds until probably Friday night, Thursday night, um, and start taking them again. So... That's a whole nother ball game. I don't want to complain about it. I just want to bring awareness to people. And if you have this, if you have fibromyalgia, um, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, if you know where I'm coming from, comment. Let me know if you need somebody to talk to or anything like that. I'm here because I, I, I know what it feels like. It does cause you to become a totally different person, have a totally different personality, but you have to force yourself to work through that situation so that you can have a fulfilled, positive life. It's, it's, it's a difficult situation, a difficult disease to, to, to deal with. And it's also difficult because Yes, I have this, this chronic pain disorder um, where most of the, a lot of the times when it comes on, I don't have energy to get out the bed. So I'm stuck in the bed for three days. So imagine that with trying to make a living, trying to make money. That again, falls in line with the, the depression. You're, you're, you went out. It, it just a trigger it, it triggers so many different components in life that yeah it's it's difficult to say the least um i went over medication treatment massage exercises what they say what i do notice when i am on my hcg protocol diet that i feel the best because i've eliminated 
sugars and carbs, gluten, you know, things of that nature. So I feel a hundred times better, but I can't eat like that all the time. Although I try to. Uh, let me make sure that I'm not forgetting anything important. Traffic is bad, you guys. Really bad. And I'm trying not to act a fool on nobody because they are so annoying. All right. So they say far as um, treatment, far as dietary, stay away from meat. Try to eat a lot of green vegetables. Like I, that's pretty much what I did on the HCG protocol. So um, I can see why it makes such a significant difference when I'm on it. I feel so much better. I'm having, uh, I'm, I'm hurting, but knock on wood, the last week or so I had felt great and that's because the weather is pretty good right now I think it's about 80 degrees today um, but again anything can trigger this type of chronic pain it's just something that I'm learning even though I, I, I was diagnosed with it three years ago even though I was diagnosed with it then, I'm still learning to, to suffer with this, to deal with this and keep pushing through and stay motivated, stay inspiration, stay, stay inspired um, to keep reaching for my dreams, to keep doing what I, doing what I had planned to do in life re, regardless of the pain. Yeah, it's real, you guys. But like I said, I refuse to give in to it. I refuse for it to keep me down. I'm not going to be that, that person that always say, oh, I don't feel good. No, I might be sick, but if you want to go do something, I'm going to try to push through and I'm going. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to be there. I don't want to be known as miss sick red bone <laughs> don't want to do it but i appreciate appreciate you guys for listening to me this is really therapy for me guys this is truly therapy for me also so if, if you feel like it's therapy for you let me know um i know that it's people out there with this this with this uh with fibromyalgia with chronic pain and they feel alone. They really do. They feel alone. And that's because once you get that that trigger, that pain, you you you're stuck. Imagine that feeling of being stuck. Oh my goodness. That 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 sucks for a person that's used to getting up and doing what they gotta do, grinding and, and making things happen. And all of a sudden, you can't do it. You can't do it. So, again, that's what we was talking about today, fibromyalgia. If anybody have any questions, again, comment. I'm going to need you guys to like, comment, subscribe, share, share, share. I'm blowing up y'all timelines if you haven't noticed. Um, this is real life, you guys. This is Miss True Red Bones real life. Up and down. Like it or leave it. I hope y'all like it. If y'all have any questions, if y'all just need somebody to talk to about fibromyalgia, chronic pain, hit me up. Send me a message on any of my social media sites um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But I wanna say thank you everybody for tuning in, subscribing, commenting. I mean, I got some good friends, you guys. And I'm just going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and sign out now. Okay. Okay, okay. This Miss True Redbone. And I got to go to work, y'all. Peace.